So starting with that original inspiration from my field sketches, I've gathered together lots of other reference. Some from old identification books of bird guides. They've got illustrations in them. And downloading some photographs from the internet as well as taking some of my own photographs for those extra details and reference. And once I've got all of this together, it allows me to draw and sketch and create that final composition, which I have here. The final composition now has been plotted onto a piece of stretched watercolour paper. And then considering my light effect that I want to create, I have used a little bit of masking fluid to protect a few areas of the white paper. Starting off with a little bit of wet into wet, putting a little bit of clean water down over all of that background thistle area. Using my photographic reference, I'm going to be plotting in all this blurry background colour, hopefully to throw the light effect forward on my composition. Just dropping in wet into wet, where I have an area where I would like a nice soft fluffy seed head. Just making sure that I don't put too much colour in that area. Drying the brush and mopping out. Having got a lot of that wet into wet filled in, now I know exactly where to bring my background wash to. I'm intending to fade it out in amongst these thistles and I'm going to achieve a nice uniform background by using gouache. And that has to be applied in one go, so that's my next step. Just bringing some clean water up to that wet gouache edge and encouraging it to fade out. Just mopping out to prevent a hard edge where that background stops just want it to drift into that blurry thistly foreground. Now it just needs to dry. Now that I've got my very uniform flat gouache background in, that's nice and dry, I can now see how much more colour I need to bring into this foreground and my next step of course is to wash in some colours on the birds. Just a light red wash to plot in where these features sit. I've used a piece of paper just to protect that gouache layer because it's very susceptible for getting marks and spots on and I need to keep it safe until I've finished my foreground composition.
Now that the colour on the birds has been plotted in, it's a case of building up the strength and gradually balancing the whole image. But before I do that, because my bird here on the left is moving, I'm going to use the same wet into wet effect as I've done with the thistles to imply that movement when I put the colours in on the bird's wings. So to give that blurry movement effect, even where I've plotted in that light grey to represent the black, it's a sticky mixture onto a damp surface. So that as I lay in that colour, the edges move and it gives a blurry out of focus effect. Whilst that paint is in the water moving around, I can control where it goes by mopping the edges. And just like everything else, it will be built up layer upon layer, but of course for wet into wet, each time it dries, a layer of water is laid down in order to get that next layer of paint to move in the same way. So now that the birds have been built up in colour, they're a lot more richer, it shows that the background also now needs a bit more colour and I shall build that up so that everything balances as I go along. Well this is all filled in and dry, my next step is to start getting a bit more definition by way of a few stems and stalks and I'm going to use another technique for that which is taking clean water and lying it across the surface randomly with lines and then drawing in some of my stems as I go along the stem hits the water and of course it rushes off in different directions, which gives me a really natural way of creating stalks and stems. Just starting to add a few more spiky areas of the thistles, including, of course, some of those leaves that are still clinging on. Just putting in a few little spiky edges here and there.
just getting some darker tones in over those areas I've masked off while that masking fluid is still on the surface. So that I can get that off as soon as possible. So just getting some of those really contrasty random marks in amongst all of that light effect on the edges of the stalks and stems. Well, that's got a lot of that twiggy texture in there now and some nice darker pockets. So I can now remove the masking fluid that gives me those little glints of white highlight amongst the vegetation. But before I attempt to take any of that off, it needs to dry properly. That's all the masking areas taken off. And now I can add that final layer. Just using a little dry lifting technique to make the top edge of that divide between the background and the foreground a little bit more spunky. I hope you've enjoyed watching this piece of artwork grow from just an idea to almost finished. What I tend to do to see what final touches are needed is to place a mount board around the composition. This highlights any areas that need a little bit of attention. So it's just a tweak here and there and then I can sign it off.